world's most funny and successful comedians and a good Canadian boy, Russell Peters! I can't believe they have like a post-apocalyptic theme up here. This, it's like, we'll let a brown guy host, but the world has to end first. How about that? They, empty oil drums, that the price of gas has gone that high? That, these are the drums we couldn't fill. <laughs> Welcome to the Juno Awards. It's great to be here. Wow, I'm home. <laughs> The Juno people have been treating me really well. They've actually uh, given me my own driver, Chad Kroger. Um, he's, uh, he's got a heavy foot, dude. He's, uh... <laughs> They're gonna have to change the name from Nickelback to get your license back. I think that's what we're gonna have to change the name back. Couldn't make it as a drunk man. Failed scene. <laughs> oh, stop it. I'm very honored to be hosting the awards this year. They got a great show. They have, they got, they got, uh, you should see the acts they've got lined up tonight. Now, I've never actually seen the Juno Awards, I'll be honest with you, I guess which makes me Canadian. Uh, speaking of which, Stats Canada just revealed that South Asians, my people, um, are now the largest visible minority group in Canada. <laughs> Did you know that? Look at you, you brown bastards. Look at you right there. I see you. Don't act like I don't see you. And judging by that, I think you're the only two Indians that showed up. So, um, the rest of my people are probably at home watching this on... This is free if we watch it from here. So that's what they're doing. They're watching it at home. Do you know what that means, Calgary? Pretty soon your cowboys are going to be Indians. What an incredible show we got for you tonight, folks. The teleprompter's not working with me, but who cares about all that, huh? That's what I say. Tonight we have some of the biggest musicians in the world that are Canadian. It would have been, that's right. It would have been all of them, but Celine Dion uh, couldn't make it. Uh, Renee, I think, just lost her in a high-stakes poker game. Um, but my homegirl, Avril Lavigne, is here. Look at her. She'll be performing her big hit, Girlfriend, which she recorded in eight languages. Eight! None of them, any of the Indian languages. I think it would have sounded good, you know. Hey, hey, you, you, mom, mom, don't marry me to that girl. I think it's... It's got a ring, we can work on it. We'll do a remix, you know. Feist is here. Or as my people call her, Feast. That girl Feast is doing fantastic. That, uh, you got an iPod commercial, you did Saturday Night Live, you were on the Grammys, and you're here at the Junos. <laughs> well, you had a good run, you know? Um, <laughs> Ann Murray is here, living legend. Uh, I can't. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I can't say anything bad about Anne Murray because I think I might have been conceived to her music. Um, it's possible, you know. Can I have this dance? Maybe later we could take a picture, you know, for my MySpace or something. You and me. Well, I'm glad everyone's here. We've had so many successful Canadian acts. And you know they're successful because they don't live here anymore. <laughs> hey, do you think if I still lived here, I'd be hosting the awards? Hell no. <laughs> Russell, stay in Brampton. It's okay. Um, now let's get to the first award of the night. Her song, Believe, has been chosen as the two official song to the 2010 Winter Olympics. And I'm not even sure how he got here tonight, because last I heard, the truck got stuck. Please welcome Susie McNeil and a man whose name means something very rude in my language. Corb Lund! 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Azim Munatwala. I am uh, from India. Um, I live in a... You don't have to laugh at that. Uh, <laughs> India. Uh, no, I am from India. I live in the city of Mumbai. I live in a lovely part of the city called uh, Traffic. Uh, and uh, you guys, you guys, you say you have traffic in Melbourne and that is so cute, really. <laughs> Just like 10 cars out in the street. Fucking hectic today, isn't it? Fuck off. <laughs> You know nothing about traffic. Like, if you see 10 cars on a road in India, there's two reasons for that. Public holiday, nuclear holocaust, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pleasure, it's a privilege to be at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Um, it's great to see all of you guys out here. It's great to see you guys laughing. There is a great statistic about laughing. It says that every time you laugh, it extends your life by two minutes. Yeah. A lot of bullshit, that is. <laughs> But we, we like to do this, right? We like to take facts and back them up with statistics. People say, don't smoke, man. Every time you smoke, it reduces your life by five minutes. And I'm like, cool. But how do you check? <laughs> like, what, is there an HR department in heaven where there's a guy with a calculator is going, hmm, minus five. <laughs> minus five, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> And if laughing does extend your life by two minutes, it must make the Grim Reaper's job very difficult. Yeah? Goes to an old man who's about to die. Come, old man, it is your time. And at that exact moment, the old man is like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll wait for two minutes then. <laughs> Fuck in four minutes. <laughs> Bro, just have a cigarette. Come on, we got a schedule to give. Fuck! <laughs> I am a cigarette smoker myself, which is not the most fun thing to be in Australia because cigarettes are fucking expensive here, dude. $30 a packet, have you lost your minds? <laughs> Death cannot be this expensive, come on. <laughs> and you're not allowed to bring your own cigarettes into the country, just allowed one packet, that's it. And, but is that stopping me from smoking? No. Because smokers, we may lack many things, but commitment is not one of them. <laughs> yeah. And I am not simply a smoker. No, no, no. I'm a smoker. I'm also Indian and an engineer. Which makes me committed, cheap, and a fucking genius. <laughs> but I, I find it incredible that with cigarettes being as expensive as they are, that homeless people over here have the audacity to come and ask me for cigarettes on the street. Yeah? Just every day, three guys that can have a cigarette, man, fuck off, no. It's too expensive, I can't afford this. Just some gold instead, it's cheaper. It's ridiculous. I was reading up about this. The government of Australia apparently increases the prices of cigarettes by 12.5% every year. Which means that cigarettes may not be a great lifestyle choice, but I think they are a fantastic investment. <laughs> yeah. I think you should be advertising this on the radio. Like, why invest in the lottery of the stock market when cigarettes could give you guaranteed returns? <laughs> buy 10 packs now and by 2025 you could put a down payment on a mansion in Frankston North. It's a local reference, I have done my research. <laughs> True. But genuinely, it's great that you guys are in a position where, you know, your government is looking after your health, it's like discouraging you from smoking, like looking at healthcare at sort of, such a microscopic level. Because my government back home, we can't do this shit. Because we have, like, other priorities. My government is still trying to figure out how to get people to shit indoors. <laughs> we do not have the bandwidth for this level of woke just yet, so... <laughs> it's terrible. But I was, I was in Mumbai, in traffic, where I live, and uh, this advertisement, anti-smoking advertisement, played on the radio. It said, did you know? I said, I did not know. Please, continue. I <laughs> don't know why I was talking to the radio. That's how boring traffic gets. It said, did you know that six million smokers die every year? I said, hmm, that's pretty sad. But then I started doing the math, right? Engineering brain, started thinking. What if all these six million smokers were not dying every year? So I started calculating, right? Now, I was in India. India accounts for one-sixth of the world's population. So one-sixth of six million, one million of these smokers would be from India. Now, I was in Bombay. Bombay accounts for one percent of India's population. So one percent of one million, one thousand of these would be from Bombay. Traffic was very slow. I had a lot of time. <laughs> Further reading, one out of every 22 Bombay residents owns a car. So 1,000 divided by 22, that's 45. So in conclusion, if all these 6 million smokers were still alive, there would be 45 more cars in this traffic along with me. 
And I said, thank God. <laughs> Listen, why are we giving shit to smokers here? As a society, we are trying to find a solution to the population crisis. <laughs> smokers are voluntarily taking one for the team. Yeah. Yeah. For all you non-smokers, think about it this way. For every 10,000 smokers who light up a cigarette, your chances of finding free parking 20 years later <laughs> improve exponentially. <laughs> So don't give us the cancerous lung and the smoking kill sign on the cigarette packet. Fuck that. Put a smiley face on there and say thank you. <laughs> Listen, man, you guys have been great. My name is Azim. Thank you so much.